Marie Nicole Designs, and I am sharing the Fun Snappers Journey and Spellbinders Kindness Matters Kit. Now, this is a new kit that will be coming out uh, the 10th of every month from Spellbinders and Fun Stampers Journey. And this month, the kit has some really fun things. So they've got this background stamp here that I have embossed and stamped with some white pigment ink. And I've also done a card here that's got kind of a color block sort of style where I've stamped that pattern and then embossed to make a simple one layer card. You can also layer this stamp on a background, just kind of stamp it out um, and continue that background on a whole card front like I did there with some tone on tone stamping. They have this sweet birthday wishes stamp set which has this girl and this big dress and a cake and all kinds of birthday things. And the kindness is cool stamp set. I'll be using this one today as well. I just think that koala is really fun and some really great images there that you can color. Here is an example of that koala. I like how that they have the hands in this set that you can stamp, cut out, and add them to whatever you want him to hold. Um, so I thought this watermelon background was kind of really bright and fun, fun card to make. You also get this stencil, which is a really fun design. You can go ahead and add different things like ink over here. I've made a background here where I ink blended and then I sprayed over the stencil. So there's a lot of things you can do with stencils. I think this is a really fun design and I just wanted to give you a look at what that looks like when you spray over it. So moving on, we're going to start with our first card, and I wanted to stamp out a really tall birthday cake. So I'm starting with the cake stand that's in this set, and I'm going to take some of my Fun Stampers Journey um, black ink. Now this is a hybrid ink, so once you stamp it and it's dry, it should be permanent with whatever coloring medium you choose. So you could do alcohol markers, you can do watercolors, you can do anything, and it should not run. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my really tall cake and I'm lining up these layers to just stack them on top of each other. Now these are rubber stamps. They're not clear so you can't see through them to see where you're lining this up. But I do appreciate that the picture on the back lines up with the stamp on the front so you can line up that picture where you want it and you're going to get a great stamped image right where you want it every time. So you can just uh, trust that picture on your rubber stamp to line things up the way you want them. So I put two of these large cake layers and I'm going to do two of the smaller ones on top. Just kind of layer this cake over each other. Some of these images I did stamp twice to make sure I got a nice crisp black impression. And there are birthday candles in this set but I wanted to do a nice big bouquet of flowers on the top. You could use this as a wedding cake as well and kind of change it up. This did end up being a birthday card, um, but I like that you can use it for other occasions as well. So after I got that all stamped out, I did some really simple coloring with my alcohol markers. Um, I did not show that in today's video because I just wanted to show creating this card, but I just simply colored the frosting pink and the hearts pink and that was about it. So I'm going to use this flower background for my card background. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it out doing sort of a tone on tone look here on this blue cardstock using some of this pool play um, ink from St Fun Stampers Journey. Um, so I did go ahead and stamp this twice as well. The first stamp you can see there wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it. So I went ahead and stamped it again. And that's the great thing about using a stamp platform like this is that you can go ahead and stamp as many times as you want and get the impression that you're going for. So it's easy to line up this pattern as well. Um, like my cake that I showed you, the picture on the back of this stamp lines up where it's supposed to go as well. So you can just line up that picture and stamp it out and continue this background all across your card background. I did switch to my larger stamp platform just so that I can move it around and get to the whole background. I didn't stamp that upper right corner because I'm going to layer my cake on top of there. So what I'm doing now is I'm gluing my cake over a piece of this gold mirror cardstock. You can see I've used this a million times. I've done a lot of die cutting, but I don't like to waste any of my pretty, pretty cardstock. So I'm just going for a gold border here. No one's going to know that I've die cut a lot of pieces out of the back side. You're just going to see that little gold border. So it's a really great way to kind of use up your cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down over my stamped pattern background. 
and I'm gluing it at an angle so that I can kind of just make that cake the focal piece and then you have a little bit of that pattern stamped out on the background just kind of peeking out behind the cake and it turns out to be a really simple um, feminine birthday card but like I said you can make this a wedding card as well and just change up the colors for the wedding that you're going to I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off the sides here and make this card all flush is an a2 size card which is four and a quarter by five and a half the last thing I did is I just took one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I'm stamping it out um, on top of this cake I'm going to emboss it in gold so that I get a little bit more gold on this card and it's going to kind of match with that gold border that I put around my cardstock I'm just using a little bit of embossing ink stamping that out and then I'm going to um, emboss it with some gold embossing powder I do like to use a stamping buddy bag before I emboss and that just kind of reduces the static cling when you're embossing so that you get a really crisp embossed image. And using these rubber stamps, I do appreciate that they're such a great quality. A lot of times I only have to stamp once, maybe twice, and I get a really great smooth impression and I love that. So here is the first card all stamped out. Super simple and you can see my coloring was simple as well. It made just a really sweet feminine card. Now we're going to go with a card that's a little bit more fun and um, playful and I'm using this um, stamp set that the koala is in for this one. So I'm stamping him out with the black ink from Fun Stamper's Journey as well. This is a great all around ink that you don't have to guess what medium you want to use with it since it works with all of them. You can just stamp it out. Make sure you heat set it. Make sure it's dry before you start coloring and you're good to go. Now I did stamp out a few koalas and I stamped out some other images. I ended up only using one koala and this big heart and you'll see my fun design um, as we build it. But I, I sometimes like to stamp out multiple images at once while I have it in my stamp platform just so I can go ahead and color them and have them on hand if I want to make um, quick cards later. So to color these images I'm using some of these watercolor pencils from Fun Stamper's Journey. I have to tell you I am not that great at coloring with colored pencils. Um, it's probably the coloring medium that I've had the least amount of practice with. So my coloring is going to be super simple. I just wanted to show you how these watercolor pencils work. So I have this image stamped out on watercolor paper um, because I am going to be applying a water over these pencils. Now all I'm doing is simply putting a light shade of this color on top of my image and then I'm going to take a water brush and blend it out and you'll see how this color just starts to move when you add some water on top of it. Now like I said I'm doing some really simple coloring. I'm not doing a whole lot of shading. Um, when I do water coloring I like to go by layers. Put a light layer on, let it dry, and go back with some shading. Um, so I tried that with these pencils as well um, and they work really great. I think I just need personally a little bit more practice with colored pencils because I don't use them a lot. I usually use markers or some other kind of medium. Uh, so I'm going to be practicing with these pencils a little bit more but you can see once you add that water it really does spread out that pigment it smooths out the lines from those pencils so it's a really fun pencil to play with when you kind of want a watercolor look on your images I did speed up this footage a little bit because my coloring usually takes me a little bit of time. I like to go slowly, make sure I stay in the lines, um, and it's a little bit relaxing. I love doing some coloring and coloring some great images like this koala here. I did go over all of those little white parts just to make sure that it blends easily into the rest of the color here. And then once that was all done, I let it dry. I did come back and do a little bit more shading. It's kind of hard to tell on the finished image. And then I did fussy cut these images out. Now I'm going to go ahead and color my heart with these pencils as well. I'm showing you I'm coloring just the same way I did my koala. I'm putting a really light application of this color down and I'm going to add a little bit darker of pigment down at the bottom of the heart here so it looks like a little bit of shading at the bottom. Um, and this kind of worked if you just want to go over it once with your water. <laughs> it kind of gives you that shading look um, without going back a few times 
times and letting it dry. So that does work as well. Um, but if you really want to add some contrast and build up those layers and colors, go ahead and let it dry and then come back in later and add some more color. So here's my two little images all colored. I want to show you how fun it is that you can stamp out this koala's little hands, add them to whatever you want him to hold, and it looks like he's holding something for you on your card. So the first card I showed you, he was holding a watermelon. Now I want to show him holding this really big heart here. I'm putting some little drops of glue on either side and then I'm gonna glue his little hands onto the sides of the hearts here. And I think it's really fun and really cute when you put him, put this heart over the koala, it looks like he is holding this heart for whoever you're giving the card to. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got those hands there. I'm kind of letting them um, pop off the edges a little bit. It looks like his hands are wrapping around this heart. And then you can just kind of add it over your character wherever you think it makes sense. I did kind of angle it a little bit as well, just made it um, a little off center there. And I'm adding it with some Fun Stampers Journey foam adhesive just to kind of pop that heart up and make it look like he is handing it to you. So I think that's really fun, really cute. There's also a pair of sunglasses in this stamp set that you can um, stamp and cut out and add to this koala if you wanted it to make him look like he's got some shades on. So there's a lot of fun ways that you can accessorize with this stamp set and I thought it was really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my background. I'm, go I'm going really simple today. I'm using some colored cardstock from Fun Stamper's Journey. I've got some light purple cardstock cut down to smaller than my card base and I'm adding some strips of paper. So I've got some pink here, I've got some blue, and I'm just adding a few strips on the bottom of this cardstock. Again, I'm using my Fun Stamper's Journey liquid glue. Gives me a little bit of wiggle time to get all my pieces on here and kind of wiggle them around until they're straight before it completely dries. And then once it's dry, it does give a great hold to your card, your card um, projects is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of trim off those little strips here and make sure that my card is all neat and clean and square. So I've got my stripes there. I've got my little koala ready to go. I'm going to build my sentiment. Now I'm using some of these um, alphabet die cuts. This is from a steel rule die from Spellbinders. This is not included in the kit, but you can always cut out your own alphabet letters, add them on here, and there is a sentiment in the stamp set that I am recreating. I just wanted a little bit different of a font, and I like mixing it up with die cut letters and stamped fonts, so I'm just doing a little bit of mix and match here with my different dies, um, and you'll see how I build the rest of my sentiment using that stamp set. Um, that st sentiment from the stamp set here in a minute. I'm just lining up all of my letters, making sure that they are straight um, so that I can add the rest of my sentiment. So here's the sentiment that I'm using from the stamp set. It says, love bigger, and I thought that was really fun, but I wanted to make the love in the big love letters that I already added to my background. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out the word bigger on this blue cardstock, and this is just a piece of cardstock that was left over from those stripes that I put on my card base. So it's the same color of blue, it's gonna coordinate, and I'm going to go ahead and embody it in white. So I'm embossing it in my white embossing powder and I'm going to go ahead and cut it down. You can see a little bit of that word love there. I want that not to be showing so I'm really going to trim this down really close to the letters to make sure I've got all of that off <laughs> and then I can go ahead and add it to my card base. Now I'm going to add it later and I'm going to add it with some foam adhesive so it kind of pops up over the words love. And it's kind of a creative way to get a little bit more out of your stamps um, and kind of change up the sentiments that come with your stamp set. So now I'm using the stencil that is included in this kit and I'm using some of this um, texture paste from Fun Stamper's Journey. Now this is really smooth, it goes on really easily, spreads on like butter, <laughs> and I like to just kind of spread it over my stencil and kind of watch and make sure that I am getting all of those nooks and crannies in the stencil and getting a nice stenciled impression. 
Now, um, you can add different colors to this if you have some uh, watercolor or different things. You can add glitter. There's a lot of things you can do that with this. I wanted to keep it white on white so that it wouldn't compete too much with what's going on with my stamped images and all the color, but it gives a little bit of texture and a little bit more interest to the card base. Um, so I really liked the way it turned out. Now, if you do a nice thin application, it doesn't take incredibly long to dry. I did hit it with my heat tool to kind of speed up that drying process a little bit, but you can always just set it aside and let it air dry. I like to take my finger and just kind of rub along the edges and make sure none of that paste is kind of hanging off so that I get clean edges to my card. And I didn't do the middle because I knew I was going to cover that with my card base anyway, my card front. So I'm going to go ahead and add my koala with some more foam adhesive and then I'm going to go ahead and add this whole panel with some more foam adhesive to my card base. So I've really got a lot of foam adhesive going on here. I love dimension. I love popping up different elements just to make them more of a focal point on your card. And I have to say I really appreciate that the Fun Stampers Journey foam squares the backing paper comes off easily because the last thing I want to do when I'm building a card is sit there and struggle with the backing paper. So when it comes off easily, that's my favorite. <laughs> so once I have this piece all adhered to my card base, that pretty much finishes the card. So I hope you enjoy a look at this um, Kindness Matters kit. Go over to the Spellbinders website and blog for more information. And if you have any questions or comments, just drop them down below. Otherwise, I'll have some photos at the end of this video showing you some more cards that I've made with this kit. Um, a lot more ideas you can do. There are endless ideas and possibilities with all of these fun stamp sets and stencil. And I hope that this has inspired you to get into your kit and build some fun cards for yourself. So, so thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.